Chapter 76 For the Leader with String Music A Psalm of Asaph A Song In Judah is God known His name is great in Israel In Salem also is set his tabernacle And his dwelling places in Zion There he broke the fiery shafts of the bow The shield and the sword And the battle Salah Glorious art you and excellent, coming down from the mountains of prey. The stout-hearted are bereft of sense, they sleep their sleep. And none of the men of might have found their hands. At your rebuke, O God of Jacob, they are cast into a deep sleep, the riders also and the horses. You, even you, are terrible, and who may stand in your sight when once you art angry? You just cause sentence to be heard from heaven. The earth feared and was still. When God arose to judgment to save all the humble of the earth, Selah, surely the wrath of man shall praise you, the residue of the wrath shall you gird upon you. Vow and pray unto the Lord your God. Let all that are round about him bring presents unto him. That is to be feared. He menacheth the spirit of princes. He is terrible to the kings of the earth. All right, let's go back up to verse 1. Now, once again, this is for the leader. That's for God Almighty. Uh, with this string music. Uh, string music's always played on an instrument that makes the twanging sound that calls to remembrance uh, God's mercy, what God's done, God's work. This is a psalm. Of Asaph, uh, of Asaph. Asaph is the gatherer. It means the gatherer, the one who gathers up. This is a song. And a song is something we can sing over and over. Something to remind us. And depends on what the song is. is what it's going to remind us of. We're going to pick it up in verse 2. In Judah is God known. His name is great in Israel. In Yudah, Yudah means praisings. And in praisings, God is known. God is made known through our praisings. His name, or his sham, his presence is great in Israel. And that's those that contend with the mighty one. Those that, that want to contend or... Or you know, not be in accordance with God's understanding. We're not. We're, we're not talking about. We're including the whole house of Israel, but we're not talking about each individual. There are those that that honor God. There are those that respect God. There's those that observe and keep and do the ordinances and statutes and law of God. These we're not. We're not talking about. But God's name is great, and what we find out His presence is great. We we see the acts of God within these that He has used for His witness. Three, in Salem also is set His tabernacle, His dwelling places in Zion. His in Salem, uh, Shalom is is peace means peace. And that's where Salem is. Salem was that place where Melchizedek lived. It was the place of Shem. Uh, and that was the son of Noah. He was the teacher there. And he was the... From there we get uh, the Jerusalem. At the same place. The place is the same as Jerusalem. Also he said his tabernacle. We find out that's... God making a witness of this place from a long time ago, from all the way back from Abraham. This was uh, this would be the place of, of Salem. That's the place where God had set his tabernacle. His dwelling place is in Zion. He dwells in Zion. That's that parched place. That's that, that's that mound made from many generations, that parched place. God's shown his judgment. From generation to generation, God shows his judgment there. It's parched place. It's like a marker set there. It's a little little post where we can recognize. Should be able to call remembrance and say, oh, yes, this is where we have seen God's judgment before. Four. There he broke the fiery shafts of the bow, the shield, and the sword, and the battle. Selah. 
because there's where he broke the fiery shafts of the bow. There's where he broke, uh, he broke these things that they bend, and for their strengths, they bend to give, to, to uh, use. Um, it, that, it's the shield and the sword. The shield is that protection. The sword is that which we use to, to fight back with. Uh, we can look at it like that. It's the, our defense. We're talking about the law of God here. That's what we're talking about. It's, the, it's God's understanding, His knowledge He give you from the beginning and the battle. Because this is what they do battle with, and they bend these things. They, and what they do is it is to be bent to show the strength of God's law, but it's not to be bent for distortion. And these fiery shafts, that's what we find. The fiery shafts would be the distortion of God's law, the distortion, the twisting, the, which brings on the judgment of God. Five, glorious art you and excellent coming down from the mountains of prey. Glorious uh, and excellent, mighty is God uh, coming down from these mountains of prey. The mountains of prey is those high places men make, those high places, the places they exalt. God said, don't do that. But when they do, it's, it's going to be for prey, and that's what God's going to use it for. Six, the stout-hearted are bereft of sense. They sleep their sleep. And none of the men of might have found their hands. The stout-hearted are bereft of sense. Well, uh, you know, the stout-hearted here are the leb. And the that's that inner man. That's that mind. Uh, your will, your heart, your understanding, that innermost part, uh, that which w is within you. And we can look at it, it it's like the, your senses, the, who you are. Uh, they are bereft of the, your, the sense. Uh, basically, it's, it's kind of a nice way of saying you, 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 you're stupid. Uh, they sleep their sleep, and and that's be stupefied, to be dumb, to be to be found asleep. You don't know what's going on. You you will find out. I I compare this to a drunkenness, and when somebody gets drunk and they just pass out. None of the men of might have found their hands. The, none of the men of might. These of power. These of strength. They they ain't found their works. Why? Well, they, they they ain't got no remembrance. God takes that away. See, God causes that to to go away, and, and you don't have the abilities to recover your works. Seven, at your rebuke, O God of Jacob, they are cast into a deep sleep, the riders also, and the horses. At your rebuke, who's God's? At God's rebuke, at... At the Almighty's rebuke, this, the God of Jacob, that's the one we're talking about. We want to make sure we are very determined about which God that is. None of these other not a gods, for we know that God had no image. There was no image of God. Yes, God of Jacob. Jacob, once again, is the supplanter. They are cast into a dead sleep. In other words, they just don't know they don't realize they don't understand they are in a sleep so to speak or in the dark uh, the riders also in the horses the riders that's that's those that sit upon the strings that's just those that got a hold of the reins they think they can control the knowledge the understanding of God the way it should be dealt out so to speak eight you, even you, are terrible. And who may stand in your sight when once you are angry? And we'll find out. God is awesome. God is to be revered. And who can stand before the Lord when he is angry? When, when he releases his judgment, we'll find out. God judges everybody fairly, equally. Uh, by the same law, there's no respect of persons. Doesn't matter who you are, king, priest, or or, or commoner, as they are uh, 
uh, referred to. It doesn't matter who you are. God's not a respecter of persons. In God's eyes, we are just uh, all the same. One. Nine. You didst cast sentence to be heard from heaven. The earth feared and was still. God did cast... Uh, God did cause sentence to be heard from heaven. Not cast, I guess, but caused to be heard. Uh, you know, it's a very simple thing. When the law went forth, and that was the blessing. Uh, the judgment was an automatic thing when you don't take up the blessing. The earth fears. All flesh fears before the law of God. Eh? And, and still, be, and was still. Well, and the still here is to be just silence, to be silence, to be quiet, to be calm. I find out and know who God is, because he gave the law in the beginning, 10. When God arose to judgment to save all the humble of the earth, Selah. And that's why he gave the law, see. That's why the law came down. Uh, God was arising in judgment. And he was to save all the humble of the earth, all those that was humbled, those that, that observed God's law, that, that, that kept God's understanding, that these are those that seek to do good. They want to do something good in the earth. They ain't just trying to take whatever they get and do wickedly. And they've, what they've done is made, they've made themselves accountable to God. They've made themselves responsible for what they've done. It's a very simple thing. 11. Surely the wrath of man shall praise you. The residue of the wrath shall you gird upon you. And we'll find out the, the wrath of man does praise the Lord. It just actually shows, and it's all the anger man has, all his frustrations, all the problems he's got in the earth. It's, it's not hard to understand. This it causes God to pray. This gives praise to God. How does it praise God? Well, it, it makes known. See, it makes known. It serves as a witness. We have both the counts. We have the positive and the negative. And they both uh, praise God. They both called called an understanding God, His law, which causes it. This uh, residue of the wrath, uh, that's just what's left over in it all. We'll find out. See, God girds it upon Him. God's got the last word in it all. God's got the vengeance. See, God's got the judgment seat. It all belongs to God. Twelve. Vow and pay unto the Lord your God. Let all that are around about him bring presents unto him that is to be feared. Vow. Make a promise. Uh, say what you're going to do and do it. Don't don't be one who doesn't do what they say, doesn't stand for what they they are. So you take responsibility for yourself and pay unto the Lord your God, and and give to God that that portion that's His. Give Him the the glory, give Him the honor, because He's the one that gives you the law, give you the ability to separate, give you the ability to choose for yourself. Uh, bring these presents uh, unto God. That is to be, he's the one to be feared. He's the one to be respected. He's the one you should reverence. God, give to him the presents. Give to him your thanksgiving. Give to him your free will offerings of thanks. Right, give God the praise. Give God the glory. He's the one that did it. 13. He minishes the spirit of princes. He is terrible to the kings of the earth. Uh, for it, it's him. It's God that does this. It's God that minishes the spirit of the princes. And to minish the spirit of the princes is uh, it's just simply to take away. He, uh, King James Version says, he cuts off. The, uh, the word is batsar. Batsar. And it means to gather, restrain, fence, fortify, make it inaccessible. To enclose it, to enclose it. See, that that's probably the word we really are looking for. He set the borders of it. 
the spirit of the prince is uh, their, their abilities, what they can do, what they know, what, the, what they've got inside of them. He is the terrible to the kings of the earth. And really, he should be reverenced by the kings. He should be respected by the kings. He will we'll find out God created the seat where they sat. He created the king, too. See, God did all that. God does that work. But we find that the king shouldn't go taking up the seat of God. That, that's not the seat he was given. Uh, you know, it's, it's a very simple thing. The judgment, uh, judgment belongs to God, and all things should be according to God's understanding, God's knowledge, and God's will. It's a very, very, very simple thing. We're going to move forward. Psalms 77, turn and return.